biggest events are on Fox Sports. not just from her face but look at her teammates pretty much pounding in there this just a poor punch by the keeper did not get enough on it then a miss clear by two or three defenders can't get the ball out there's a celebration with the teammates on the sideline and Raquel Fernandez just a few minutes ago she had that beautiful volley that Diaz made the diving save on and this time again Brazil testing that back line all night long she rides it perfectly, makes a nice little spin move around the end, and just passes that one. This time, Diaz not able to come up with a save. Now let's head out to Edmonton, check in with the duo calling this match for you live from Commonwealth Stadium. Jen Hildreth and Kendra de St. Alvin. Well, we need to see more from Japan, what we've already seen, possession style soccer. Head coach Norio Sasaki has said early on in the tournament, they struggled to kind of connect the back line with the forwards. They're gaining more confidence in that every single game. Of course, we saw it against Australia. They dominated that game in possession. Kendra, what do you see as Abby Wambach's legacy? Well, you know, I think part of it is um, her attitude. I mean, we all know what she's capable of doing on the field. We've seen it. Um, I think it's her attitude going into every game and her preparation, her dedication to the sport and, of course, to the young women out there. You know, she's all over the country doing her thing, promoting women's soccer to these young females out there that want to follow her in her footsteps. And she honors the people that came before her as well. Both the leaders for their respective teams stepping up to take these PKs. Just a beautiful finish by Williams on that play. We just said after the previous PK for Japan, you never know what's going to happen in this game. It's early. Things like this happen out of Japan's control, out of England's control, and we're back to a tie game 1-1. They're making some great runs off the ball, and here we see just an unintentional handball, but a handball nonetheless, and that whistle blows as it dropped to her feet. But the other thing I noticed on that last possession right there by Ivory Coast, Thailand, did a great job moving as a cohesive group all the way across the field as that ball was switched. They move as a unit. It looks really good. I think it's almost when a player dribbles at them in tight spaces, they fall apart a little bit there on the 1v1s. Costa Rica would advance with the victory over Brazil. For the call, let's send it over to Jen Hildreth and Kendra de St. Alvin. A nice little touch there by Poliana, but a good second defender job there. You saw the first defender get beat. The second defender slid over and helped out. That's exactly what you're supposed to do with that second defender. Be close enough that you can recover. So you don't have one team that has eight or nine national team players. There's in, so there's some parity in the league. There's right. some great competition. And they're in cities where you, a lot of them where they already have an MLS team. So you can build off that soccer culture. And I think so much of it is in the community. How do you get your community involved Women's teams, men's teams, youth teams, get them involved in the product that you're putting on the field. Have the youth days, have the camps, have the ways to get those people to the games, have family nights. I think it's just a, I mean, soccer is such a family sport, you know, and I think that's another way just to carry the momentum right through from this World Cup. Well, there was a combination there. First, the referee looked like she was icing the kicker and the keeper. And then Miyama took her sweet time, really hesitating. Barsley already on the line, ready to make that save. In my opinion, I think that was the right call, and she was inside the box. I believe the foul happened inside the box as we take another look at the play. Look at this. Perfect ball in, and it's Raquel Rodriguez elevating. No mark anywhere close to her. There was no Brazilian defender that was putting any type of a body on her, but how about that service in by Cruz? And it really started off from that left back position. Lixie Rodriguez decided, I'm going to win this ball and I'm going to take this ball forward and kind of energize that Costa Rican side. It's a nice little early birthday present for her. I believe it's her birthday tomorrow. 27 years old she will be tomorrow. But look at the attack here from Thailand. Wow, right even with that back line staying on side. And honestly, that's really a veteran mistake by the back there. Koulibaly. She kept her onside, and they served the ball in. 
keeping everybody on side, allowing that play for Thailand to develop. Number two, this veteran center back. We saw a lot of drama just like this in yesterday's U.S.-Germany game. But that's a clear call, I think, a push in the back. I mean, it's pretty obvious. She's got the momentum. She's going forward. Ariyoshi breaks free down that right side. Just enough of a nudge there at the last second when someone's going at that pace. And I think that's the right call by the referee, a yellow card and a penalty kick. Well, how many people in the tournament did we see them call the female Messi? Mm -hmm. Which right. I would take Double. it as a compliment. Somebody right. calls me the female Messi, I'm running with it. But I think at some point, you're just going to be who you are. You know, you're yeah. going to be the next Marta or, the, you know, you can have a female that's going to be kind of that role model that you're going to try to go after.